our week been? Uh, it's been a fucking roller coaster. Um, y'all know my current situation uh, at home. Uh, so that has presented quite a few challenges that I had not expected previously. Um, so yeah, man, we just maintaining, bro. Like it, it's literally one day at a time, uh, one moment yeah, at a time. Right. Really sure what's going on from day to day. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a fucking lot. Um, appreciate Pat for being there just in case I need him for a uh, little man, making sure he get around just in case. Uh, Most definitely superb in that aspect. And uh, yeah, man, you know, just having y'all to vent to have been great, but it's been a week to say the least. But how have you been faced? Like, how are you faced? How, yeah, you, the random talk is really dedicated to you this week. Uh, well, how are you? you? Can you hear me? Very well. We can hear you very well, bro. Okay. So, first of all, my face hurt a little bit because I got hit in my shit this week. Oh, uh, but that. I still came out on top of that situation. So, for those of you who are constant listeners, you know, recently, I, quite recently, I changed up my career path and went into healthcare. Um, um, so, the, the, the type of healthcare I work in is um, the, the hot topic these days. I'm not going to say too much, but the type of hot healthcare I work in is the, the, the real hot topic this, these past two years. Everybody's hopping on that wave. So um in my in my realm of healthcare, I deal with a little bit of everything and everybody. And you never know when something's gonna happen. So on this day, um, which happened to be um this past Wednesday. I was gonna say when like this past Wednesday. No. <laughs> yeah, Wednesday. So um this day, uh they started out well, regular day. Breakfast break came up. I went downstairs, got my little French toast, came back upstairs. <laughs> At this point, I got, I got a patient in the hallway. I got a social worker in the hallway. I got two nurses in the hallway and another person in my same position. And I'm like, what's going on? Because everybody don't look like they did when I first went down. And this patient seemed like he a little off. And this patient in question is all of six foot three, six foot four, a good 220. How big are you, Faith? I am five foot nine, five foot ten on a good day, one forty. Okay, just want to make sure people got the context of how this story is about to go. So, um, I look at the nurses as I come through my breakfast. I'm like, "What's going on?" They were like, "We about to medicate." I'm like, "Okay, let me put my stuff up because I know what time it is." So I go from do you know what is me to, is. hey, I do you know what I go from breakfast me to got to get ready me. So I put the gloves on. I didn't have my glasses at this point, so I had nothing to take off. So I was ready to go as long as I put my breakfast away. So I put my breakfast in a little storage room and got ready. So I'm waiting on the nurses to give the go before I or the team do anything. So right now we're just waiting for the rest of the team to gather. Um, as the team gathers, we're getting closer to this gentleman. This gentleman is getting more irritated. Um, the nurses didn't try to talk to him and de-escalate. He goes in his room. Before he goes in his room, he screams out, fuck you. Okay, mm. so I'm on edge as it is, because I know this is a big motherfucker, and if he go wild, it's going to be a tussle in this bitch. And I don't know who got my back, but I know I got my back, so we're going to see how far I go. So, who now we proceed to follow him. I got your back. Who? <laughs> so, proceed to follow this big man in his room. He sits on his bed. Um, one of the nurses, I'm not going to give any names of the nurses or the patients. So as long as you know my name, that's the only name you need to know. Face. Um, so nurses go in the room, one of the nurses begins. Yeah. So one of the nurses goes to the room. She, she continues to try to deescalate. Um, she gets a little too close to the patient. So the, me and the other nurses follow her in the room as well as one of the uh, other members of the team. Um, he stands up abruptly and starts to scream. So we pull her out of the room so she doesn't get assaulted. Because um, once again, this man is all of six foot three, four, six foot six three, six foot four, 220 pounds. Big motherfucker. Um, 
True. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, damn yeah. true. <laughs> if not, if, if not, if not a little bit taller. Right. That's so, what I'm thinking of, like a taller to it. Yeah. So we regroup in the hallway. The rest of the team comes. So now it's like 12 of us. I'm like, okay, I guess we're ready. So we all walk in the room again. Um, now the nurses are informing him he's going to be medicated because of his outburst and what's going on. Um, he's on the bed and he's not. I'm going to say he's coherent, but not coherent to what they're saying to him. And he's still going off. Um, he's still in his state of rambling. Um, so at this point, I attempt to try to de-escalate. He screams, fuck you. I was like, OK, cool. So at this point, I'm in my ready stance. If those of you know what the ready stance is, you know uh-huh. what time I'm talking about. So oh, you know, um, it's just it, it, it's just me and where I'm from. Anytime I get in that stance, my hands automatically ball up, and I can't help it. So I'm I'm constantly unballing my hands while I'm in this state. In this state, but he keep lifting his hands up, so automatically my hands is coming up. Just as defense, you ain't gonna raise your hands, and my hands not go up. So uh-huh. at this point, I have the team. I got some of the team in the hallway. The biggest members of my team are in the hallway. <laughs> Now, the oldest member of my team is right beside me. I'm I'm two feet in front of the old boy. The nurses, who are smaller than me or my size, are trying to gather around because they have the sharp instruments. They have the medication. So he calms down, and all of a sudden, <coughs> bow, he hit this shit out of the right side of my right orbital. And the top joint of my jawbone. But as he uh, did this, I used his momentum to flip him over me, grabbed him in the arm bar. We landed on the floor, me on top of him, and then the team grabbed his other limbs. I had to remember where I was at, because as I had her left arm in this armhole, I was about to break it. And then I looked at the other members of the team and realized, oh, I'm still at work. <laughs> okay, let me read. <laughs> So at this point, everyone's looking at me like, am I okay? I'm looking at them like, what y'all looking at? Now, mind you. <laughs> is, y'all, is, is y'all ready? It was like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm good. We're t- so at this point, I start talking cash shit to the old dude. I I, told, I let him know, like, oh, you thought it was going to be easy because I'm a little nigga, huh? Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Not that easy, huh? You're going to have to try harder than that one. You're going to have to try harder than that one. But I forgot he had a roommate, and his roommate was standing in the bathroom looking down at both of us, just shaking his head. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it goes down in here. Yeah, it man. goes down. It goes mind, down. Mind you, me and, me, and, me and Face have been best friends since uh, what, seventh grade? Forever, nigga? Yeah. Oh. yeah, seventh grade. So, we've been through a lot. I'll say that. Um, and then going through a lot, as being two of uh, all right, so I was I was little and fluffy, he was little and skinny, but we was always the little niggas around a bunch of people our age that was bigger than us. So me and Face literally grew up training to deal with big people. Like we literally, like before MMA was like a fad and a trend and all that shit. Like we literally trained in mixed martial arts for like years and perfected submissions and how to, like, to the point where that's probably where some of our old grunts and aches and pains come from. Just sparring with each other half the damn time, beating the shit out of each other. Um. So I would say this. I don't think big nigga knew what he was doing when he did it. I, I wouldn't fuck the face. Like when me and Chewy get get to get to tussling, that shit get ugly for Chewy. And I don't mean that as a condescending way. I just mean like I'm. I, it's like little Wolverines. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Like, like it's very. Yeah. We like yeah. It, we we built for this shit. So uh. I'm a honey badger out of this bitch. I'm sad that the big honey badger. I had to act a fool. Like, at my job, in my career, it's not, ex- it, it's a, it, they say it's not expected to be in altercations like I often am. 
but on a weekly basis, I'm in at least one or two altercations. And it's not, <laughs> I don't provoke. Yo, I don't provoke. Why are you out here fucking with these people, man? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I try to be the one, like, my job, like, I take my job very seriously in behavior. You feel me? Like, and my thing is trying to keep myself safe, the patient safe and from each other. So if I see two <laughs> people fighting, I got to get in there and get you up off them. You feel me? Because at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be held alive before you fight when I'm supposed to be watching y'all. You feel me? If I see you about to strike a nurse or strike somebody, I got to put you down real quick because I can't <laughs> let you go on a tirade because after that person, you make him after me. I don't even want to try. You feel me? So, I mean, I try at my all to use my word to try to de-escalate, reach everybody, try to be on their level, whatever the, whatever the instance of case may be. But when it does have to come to physical, they say fight or flight. I, I ain't heard about flight yet. I'm not making myself out to be the hardest, but uh, by no, by no means, no, by no way or near that. But at the end of the day, I will stand my ground. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. So, hey, I took my lumps, and I've gave my lumps too, but all within the justified defense methods taught by the company. He'll fuck y'all up and you act stupid in his job. Yeah, I translate. To, to, be a, to be a little nigga, if I get my hands on you, it's a wrap. Most people think little niggas gonna throw hands with you. If I put my hands on you, if I grab you, it's a problem. I hit people with weapons. <laughs> if I grab you, it's a problem. But on the up and up, when I fail, we fail like the beds are so low when we fail. I didn't even realize like an hour later I hurt my back. <laughs> it was like two hours later. I'm like, what the hell is going on with my back? Man. Did I fall? Yeah, we fell. His big ass fell on me. Then we flipped over. Ooh, that's why my back hurt. I didn't know why my face hurt because that big ass hand hit me in my face. I know why that shit hurt. But my back, cool. I can get over this face shit because you ain't hit me like you thought you hit me. I ain't get over it. Hey, the real question. Hmm. Are you okay? Like that's a lot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm Gucci. I'm Gucci. I been. I was fine in. You feel me? Like when the adrenaline stopped, the little aches and pains started. But I ain't really been like no real hurt. Hurt like to the point where like I'm like I'm down and out. Like I'm sore. So I don't want. I ain't. I ain't go back to work on workman's comp yet. Like I had two days off on that because I wanted to be back at 100. percent Like I should be going back to work. So I just fully just did the system like I like I just used the system like I actually should use it right. and actually filled out the correct paperwork, did what I need to do because I did have an injury. So then it was an injury to my head and it was a big motherfucker. I took the necessary <clears> stuff <throat> when I got um uh, necessary scans I needed to get, necessary x-rays I needed to get just to make sure I was using it. So just like the necessary things, if you do um mixed martial arts or or bare a bare knuckle fighting and you get hit and your shit, you gotta take the necessary precautions. It's the same thing I had to do. So it is what it is. God damn. All so like, I actually I and I say people every day, I love what I do. I love my job. I love it. Uh when I get up and I actually when I when I motivate myself to get out the bed and I actually get out the house at early in the dumb early in the morning. Once I had the car, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. I may be like other people when I'm like, you know what, I'm I'm, tired. I'm ready to go when they, when you get there because I got to put these 12s in. But I actually love what I do and I love my job because every every day is something new. Every time I go back on a different rotation, it's going to be a, at least seven new patients. You may have one or two uh, constant out of 20 some or 30 something we may have, but you're going to have a bunch of new people. And with new people, it's always something brand new with the group as a collective with each individual person. So it, it, being I like fast paced stuff and always like changes and just like to help people it, it embodies everything I actually personally like into a job so I have no problem actually getting up and going here you feel me like planning the career around it but as I also do my education in my and um, continue my education and get my certificates I won't be in this position as much but what I plan to do is like dumbing this down to part time while I go ahead to the fur to further my career on the other end of us so I got but I still must stay where I'm at with the with, with the, the sector I'm in because I love it. If I'm like, 
I ain't even gonna say the excitement because it ain't no excitement. It's just like whenever things happen, I'm gonna be right there because that's the part of my job. You feel me? Like I knew what I was signing up for when I was in school, when I was in college, and I took what I took when I when I took psychology. I knew what it was. You know? <laughs> like, I knew what it was then. But I strayed away from the field for so long. But hey, God pulls you in different directions when He wants you there. I say that I follow my path. Man, that's all we can all do, man. And uh, I think uh, from aggressive big niggas to big niggas at the gym that are they aggressive is the question. Uh, this week on the pod. Welcome to the pod with Face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the partner. The show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am one third of the partner. Your boy, Tiz. And I'm along with. The Padawan here, nearly burning his eyebrow off while uh, lighting up. But uh, yeah, I'm along with. Dramatic pause. What's up, niggas? His face. And I'm in this place. I ain't running no damn race because my back hurt a little bit. Because I got punched in my shit. <laughs> but I'm good. As you see, I'm good. And my What's eyebrows that? good. Hey, yeah, you do look normal as fuck. So I, I was wondering, did you look like Martin after he fought uh, Tommy Hearns or some shit? Uh, all I had was a little ass lump. I had a little lump right here. Like, Me. like if y'all can see, like, right here. I got a little bit of ass abrasion from where the mm. nigga knuckle grazed me, and then I had a little lump right here. But that's it. Like if you would think for well, a nigga that big and a nigga this small, it'll be much more. But when you know what you know, you know how to take a damn punch. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. Well, uh, I'm glad you don't have to take any more. That's a uh, hope that uh, we can. Uh, Eliminate that being an option at work. Like maybe you can, you know, have a great week of work where it's just, you know, really eventless. You ain't got to jump on no bitches in the bed. You ain't got to get hit in the head. <laughs> no, nothing that rhymes with Ed. Oh, um, I, I got another one for you. Oh, Lord. I, I got another quick fight story for you. <laughs> I really, like, I really like jumping on bitches on the bed. So I was going to get some juice. Now we all know I, like I work on the aggressive side. That's the only side I work on is the aggressive side. Of course. I don't like working on the I don't like I, I work on the aggressive side of the unit. I don't like working on the other side. Don't even put me over there. So on this day, the aggressive side was quiet. All quiet. But we have a habit of this. We have a saying. Never say it's quiet. Because as soon as you say it's quiet, something so pops go down. So somebody had just said, Hey, it's been real quiet today. Shit is real. I went to go get some juice. I went through the hallway. I hear a commotion as I get on the other side of the other of the unit on the on the good side. Well, on the less calm on the calm side. I'm like, what is that commotion on this side? That don't happen over here. But as I look to my left, I see everybody running through the other door back to my side. I'm like, damn, I've been over here for less than a second. What could possibly be happening now? I run past everybody back into the door because you ain't getting the mass ad before I get the mass ad. <laughs> no. I'm supposed to be over there. This mass ad, motherfuckers. My side, so nigga. I get over there. I get through, I get through, I get past two people. I get to one month, one person. I see this female patient, and I've never seen in my life someone as aggressive or in this state in my life going at another person that's saying a lot but it was like um y'all remember tasmanian devil on the cartoons when he was spinning in a circle and it was like oh my god like he was he she's everybody spinning, back up. She's spinning. Yo, it was like envision that but she won't spin in the circle she was just that enraged like she jumped on the <clears> table <throat> and was trying to get the old boy so i had to run around my homeboy while he grabbed her i got on the table and like tackled her 
so we can get her off the table because she was like this close to the other patient. And our main thing is trying to protect everybody from each other because we never know what your capabilities is once you get a hold of somebody else. So we're not trying to harm nobody and we don't want to harm nobody and, and we're not going to harm nobody, but we got to restrain you to the best of our possibilities with the techniques taught. So I got off the table. Now she didn't kicked my homeboy in his stomach <laughs> while we trying to get her down, get her in the air, get her to the hallway, finally get her down. But now she's calming down, realizing, oh, shit, what's going on? In an instant. Yeah. But once again, I love my job. Mm. I love it. Because at the end of the day, it could be that, that one person that you reach. You feel me? Like, they could be going through the episode and just your words can reach them. And be like, and they can have an understanding, like, yo, you're right. And they can just change the traje that trajectory of their day or their path or their treatment. You feel me? Like, I ain't no doctor. <laughs> I ain't no nurse. But I do what I do in my position to try to help as much as I can. Physical is the last, the first thing from my mind. I'd rather do everything therapeutically and verbally to try to assist people in their journey to try to get them better on the path that they chose to try to get better with. So, but I do have some wild stories from those tangent situations. You sound like some angels to me. Uh, God bless you as you go to work every day. Uh, you got a utility belt, Batman? You know, it's some painkillers. <laughs> right. Uh, a face yeah. orang. You know, I don't know fun about that, but all right. Uh, it actually fits face. If y'all know face. It does. The people out there that, you know, have been at, uh, in school with us or, you know, just throughout the years have met us. And, you know, you know it kind of fits his. It goes all the way back to Jay Worm, way, way back. You know, it just kind of fits his personality. He likes the, the he likes to crash into shit that's way bigger than him for some reason. I don't know why, but he likes it. Um, I guess it's kind of like I like to fight. I, it's just one of the weird things. It's like it's like, why do you like that? I don't know. Goku and Vegeta over here, Ryu and Ken. <laughs> I don't know where we're like I, when I look back at it now, and as you say, Ryu and Ken and Gogo Vegeta and all that, like I look at the red and blue skull caps encapsulating uh things right now. <laughs> it just looks like two damn virtual fighters. <laughs> um yeah, my favorite character. But I will really say I get it. That like the first person that became like a good friend of mine really likes fighting like I do. Def Jam and, fight for and, Petersburg. And it's not like on some malicious shit. It's like just what a lose, like just the sport of it, the honor of it, the combat of it, and the like if you want to act stupid to just I'm just fuck you the hell up of it. It's just I don't know, it's just all just it's like a beautiful thing. Grand Theft Auto Etric. Oh! I that. Yo, Fight. nigga, why did I just see the whole the whole neighborhood as a grid? Like, I'm looking at that shit as a map. Like, oh shit, let me go. Oh, oh, oh! Def Jam Vendetta fight for Petersburg, goddamn! Ah! Fight for the 804. That's it. Hey, yo, let me ask y'all a question. And y'all Walmart's down where y'all at? Shit. Or where y'all been at? Do you do they sell like Monopoly games based on the cities around? They do in Norfolk. Norfolk. Okay. Got, Norfolk. Uh, got, uh, I know I'm eight hours away from, but like, I went to the one. It's like a, um, you know, the Walmart, uh, like the neighborhood Walmart is just like a grocery store and shit. Yeah. I saw one in there and they had a Monopoly of Norfolk or whatever. I ain't never seen one of Portsmouth. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was out just out here on some country shit. I'm like, what the hell? But they okay, need, they need to make one. They need to make one for Portsmouth because Portsmouth got a casino now. Yeah, they trying to bring one to all the little hood places. I, I understand it, and then I don't understand it too. I understand revitalizing the community and bringing jobs, but yeah, casino. 
<laughs> nigga, that's all the money grab. I ain't revitalizing shit, man. They took they tore down them um, projects out there in Portsmouth and shit. And if y'all don't know, I'm talking about my hometown in Virginia. They tore down them port them, them projects. They first thought it was a good thing at first because they they uh, put up a TCC, a, a community college up there, Tidewater Community College up there, and then right beside damn Tidewater Community College on Missy Elliott Boulevard, right there, they put the fucking casino. Rivers Casino. Mm. It looked nice from what I've seen in the videos, but you know, it opened in January 15th, and I ain't been nowhere near Virginia January 15th. Well, one thing I could say about the Virginia casinos I've been through, the the two or three I've been to in Virginia, yeah, security be on point. So. Mm. They need to in Portsmouth. Yeah. Security be on point. They need to in fucking Portsmouth. Portsmouth is like Etrick. You know what I'm gonna tell you though. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. If you look at the city uh, layouts and the the data every year, there's two cities that's at the top of just fucked up in this. So when you look at Portsmouth and Norfolk, they ain't really that bad because the top two cities for the past almost ten to twenty years. No, I would say. If you literally look at the internet and you go all the way back and you just keep skimming the archives, I would say the top two worst cities have been Hopewell and Petersburg for the past 30 years of life. I think they're bringing the casino to Petersburg. And they just pretty much just kind of alternated. Like it'll be like Petersburg for like three years and then Word. Hope will take over for like a good five and then Petersburg will skip back in for a good six. And then you know, it's just back and forth. So like Portsmouth, it's bad. But it's it's know. on the list. It's on the list though. It's not. It might not be one. No, or it's, two. Like number six. it's like number five or number six. It's in the top ten mm -hmm. for sure. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I don't mean like it's a walk in the park. I'm just saying, it could be worse. You could be hope well. Uh, yeah, they need hope. <laughs> a well of hope. Dope <laughs> well is what they call it. Mm -hmm. Dirty Bird and China. Dirty Bird and Dope Well. Dope Well. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. In, some of, in some of these uh, 10 worst cities or whatever, Portsmouth is in, well, one of them, it, it hit um, number one on one of these lists. And South Boston. They say South Boston is bad. I heard that too. And David. <laughs> Galax? I ain't never heard of Galax. Ooh. Oh yeah, they country is shit out there. Like they got, like I met um at my when I was working on base, I met it was this, this lady from um Galax. Like I swear she was from Alabama. That sound like a niggardly racy junction. Like she was like the most like you know how southern like them, them classical southern people be. Oh hi baby. Like I'm a sip of mint julep. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but she was the nicest. She was the nicest person. I, I one of the nicest white people I've ever met. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. But she was extra, extra country. Everybody used to ask her to say shit because she was so fucking country. I don't even know where to go with that. But uh I will say this, I wouldn't approach her ass. Have y'all noticed that approaching women is becoming a thing? Like it's becoming a whole ordeal in itself. Like I saw this thing right online. It was on Instagram, I believe. And this young lady was at the gym and she was recording herself right and she recorded herself doing some weird ass hip thrusty movements right and she was trying to say that some dude was looking at her but the dude was actually it seemed like he wanted to use the machinery that she was using because she was at a squat rack and, you know, like the squat rack is like one of the top three most important pieces of equipment in the gym. 
uh, to all you TikTokers, Instagrammers, Facebookers, if you did not realize that, uh, let me tell you now. The squat rack, the curl rack, and the pull down area is probably the three number one, um, I guess, like congregation areas in the gym. They're the three number one areas of like where people are going to probably need that equipment. So you need to go ahead and do your reps and get the fuck out the way. Um, so if you got to do a TikTok or something, like try to do that shit in the aerobics room or something. Because uh, it's probably not going to be great. Or we maybe go to the free weights. I, I don't really know what the section for you is, but yeah. So she tried to make this big deal about the dude. He looked at, he glanced at her like twice and then came over to like try to put the weight on. And it looked like he was just waiting for like, all right. As soon as she done, I'm going to finally get to go ahead and, you know, uh, do my motherfucking weights. But because the she just kept on doing this weird ass movement, but she had the squat rack, but she doing this hip thrusting movement. I don't know what this shit this woman call. I guess it's something for the ass. Um, she was a little white girl, so she looked like she probably need to, you know, do some ass ups. I don't know. I don't know what this shit was called, but it's stupid. ass ups. It looked like some shit like you trying to get attention at the gym. You got it, and now you mad. So um. I didn't like it, but I will say it made me think of like because she spazzed because the guy was staring at the gym. Like, is looking at a woman or even approaching woman no longer okay? And I guess I'm posing that as an open question. And it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, is it okay to, for, for, for men to approach women? Yeah. You may know more about this than anybody. Um, see, I knew this day and age was coming, so I never was the one to just approach. Wait, come along with me. Oh, I might just say, now, oh, what age and how did you know that it was coming? Um, college, <laughs> college, okay. You don't me. No, no, say more. Like, I'm, I'm, in, I like this type of shit. Where, where are you going with this? Say more. No, I like uh, my homeboy, my homeboy twin talked about this way before now like in this day and age if you notice it's like it's just a way where it's just it's way more successful women period than before and it's just way like as far as business wise or doing entre entrepreneurship and, and things like that or and being hired more getting to jobs more in in general um and is more and more often you will see like throughout the years you'll see more cases where there's sexual harassment cases you'll start seeing more movies where it's about sexual harassment and things like that in general matter of fact sexual harassment wasn't even a term until like the 90s or like 1989 or something or something like that or whatever and then it became a term and then that term just been was basically a hot topic since then so with that happening in, in general and just, just with, with people being able to express themselves more on social media or whatever, I just knew a wave was coming where it just seemed like if you if you approach the girl the wrong way for her or whatever, or you know what I'm saying, it's easy to call that harassment. You know or what? It's easy easy for them to find a way to call it harassment <clears throat> so that yeah. i just like um i don't do nothing but just say random compliments go about my business and just wait for people to approach me and that's worked for me and i have less situations where i i feel like i made a woman uncomfortable gotcha thanks bob mm -hmm. you want to get on this? Okay, like I would say, um, when it comes to this approach and shit, like I, I feel like I feel like fuck boys and bros have kind of fucked it up for like regular people. Oh, yeah, 
I don't feel like the average man is out here probably trying to like do some real predatory shit. They probably just like genuinely think the person is attractive and want to try to figure out what's their approach to what's the best approach to try to get their attention. Like this is normal schoolyard shit. And I think that girls are kind of like going overboard with the approach or the response to it. Like, why are you so angry that somebody likes you or thinks that you're attractive enough to even look at you? Because like when when I look at it, like this is the this is the the shit that confuses me about women, yo. Like it's it's always a contradiction. It's like, look at me. I'm going to do all of these extra things to make you look at me. I'm going to dress in this provocative way. I'm going to look like do whatever. And then when you look at me, don't look at me. Okay, cool. I'm going to stop looking at you. My bad. I'm sorry. Won't look at you no more. Then when I don't look at you, you feel like you're less than. Then when I do look at you, you feel like you're... What, what, what do you want? What, what exactly is it that you want from me in that are attracted and, and I know this this is what it really is Pat and I'm gonna say this and this is gonna be some shit that probably get me in the hot water and this might be the one that get us I probably agree with it I have a feeling what you're gonna actually say I have a feeling what it's gonna I be I think Go it boils down to whether or not the woman finds the man attractive yep that's exactly what I thought you were gonna say like if, the man, if, if the woman be like oh he look good then whatever he say is fine because she wanted it to be said anyway because she wants she uh -huh. liked it. but if she don't think he attractive then that's, everything that's he is impulsive and it's all based off the lens that they're coming in with as opposed to like think about the person as just a general person what is their intent what is the person's intent like when I what like and men deal with this too like there's women who look at you like, okay, he's an attractive man, cool, and they move on about their life. And then is there, is there women that like make you feel like, hey, you all right? That's a little much, ma'am. You know what I mean? And, and uh -huh. so even men have to deal with it. It's not like it's a, it's just a, some people are just way, way overbearing when they like you, but it all boils <laughs> down to if you like the person, it always feels great. Like, oh, we're well, good. I feel good about myself today. Got some confidence boost. Great. You might not even want the person, but because you think the person is attractive, it doesn't feel bad. But uh -huh. when the person that you don't like, now it's like, ugh, why are you talking to me? You feel offended. Uh -huh. Are you objectifying me? No, what it really is is that you just don't think that nigga look good. So now you mad because the nigga that you thought looked good did not catch your eye. He didn't pay your ass. No man, he kept on doing his weights. He kept on doing his reps, and he finished his sets and walked the fuck out of the gym on your ass, and you look stupid because uh -huh. you <laughs> in makeup and a bunch of crazy tights and like these shorts that can't nobody else wear. Like you got to get a yeast infection. Trying to get this nigga, the nigga ain't you know, man. And the ugly nigga that was like, "Oh, come on, your girl, let me spot you." Like he all the play, and you was mad because that, that's really what the shit be like. Because at the end of the day, when you watch people, people in general, they take everything better from somebody that's attractive. Uh -huh. and, and it never has to be based off of whether or not you want the person. Is I'm not saying that out there, America, like. Oh, it's the person that the woman wants. It doesn't have to be necessarily that. It just has to be that like she believes that the person is an attractive person. It's just like salespeople. If the ugly nigga come up to you at the car dealership and he like, yo, hey, boy, I got this motherfucking car. And he, he look goofy as fuck. You're going to be like, uh, nigga, I'm good. But if the suave lady or the suave gentleman come up to you and they like, hey, how you doing? They always have this move like, yeah. You more it. likely to buy the car just because they done made the shit seem more appealing because their affect and their aesthetic is more appealing. It's pretty people privilege. Like, it's a lot of people in the world that get it. The partners get it. 
it is it, is women that get it. It is is people all over the world that get it. it that's all it is. It, it's you look good that day, so you got the benefit of the doubt, as opposed to the motherfucker that looked ugly as fuck. It's why celebrities win. It's why people with money win. It's why models win. It's why people who just generally have a, if you are a five or at least a hard six when you got on your gear, right, and you looking your best, you're going to win because you're already better than 50% of the population. And as a man especially, that means that you're better than literally 80% of the population because that means you ruled out women, you ruled out gay people, you ruled out men that are incarcerated so they're unavailable, you ruled out men that are going their own way or whatever that weird shit is when they don't even deal with women. So now you left with the average man. And then you got to remember that all men in general are outnumbered by women 8 to 1. In certain cities, it's up to 12 to 18 to 1. And you're now one of three men in that ratio. So, like, you you winning at all. So, like, all you got to do is be halfway attractive. And then as far as women, like, men don't really need a lot to give you attention. If you have way decent looking, a man probably is going to give you somewhat of attention, even if it's not like, oh, I want you. It's just like, all right, well, you know, I got what you said. All right, cool. Listen to you. And it's all that's all it is. In the boardroom, the women that are complaining about like, oh, I'm not getting respected because uh, it's because you have a bad attitude, so you've lowered your attractiveness level. That's all it is. It's the same reason the ugly niggas don't usually get invited to the country club. It's like, who's going to boost? You got to have something that boosts other people's quotient. Like, if I look good, right? And my nigga is start to be looking good by women. Then that means that now my quotient as a person is up because I'm not only myself looking good, but I'm able to keep people around me that can attract other attractive people. You feel me? And that's really how the world works. Like if you look at country clubs, a lot of the times the people that hang together, they all kind of fit the same model because they all have decided that my what I am is attractive. So I'm going to attract the people that are similar to that so that I can make sure that I am around other things that I find attractive. Well, you feel me? That's all it is. Yeah. Bottom line, I've seen it firsthand and hence why I have a pretty platonic friends. It works. Right. Uh-huh. I, I would I, I would say that like at the end of the day, man, it's pretty people privilege, and I think this young lady was tripping. But I also think that at the end of the day, women in general have kind of taken a a sharp turn against men, and I I, w- I would like to implore women to know that like we not bad. You got bad in fringes of everything, but. The uh, average dude is not out here like trying to creep on you, lady. The average dude, if he looked at you, he genuinely probably thought you was attractive, or he thought he knew you, or he thought you looked like somebody he knew, or he wasn't even looking at you. Because I've seen that happen to people before, too, where a dude be sitting there and he's like looking off into the distance, like thinking about some, like, okay, I got work tomorrow. I got man, damn. You know what I'm saying? Then yep. some would be like, "I ain't look like now that that dude want he was looking at the machine behind like he wasn't even he probably wasn't even looking at the machine he he was off in a whole other place and you took uh-huh. you you off left field and this person yep, ain't right. off. like I think that two things need to happen right I think women need to get to a place where they're more accepting of men in general but i also think that men need to stand up for women more so that women feel protected so they're not as on edge 
I feel like a lot of times men can't see a nigga that's creeping and not say nothing. So then the woman feel like we're all men like ride with that behavior. <coughs> but yeah. but be jealous advocate. A lot of men ain't gonna stand up and say something. Because a lot of women nowadays are, I don't need you to stand up for me. I don't need you to protect me. I can do it myself. So you got a lot of some of the men who don't, who want to, but ain't going to say some shit and, and let some shit go down so that you can realize, oh, you do want me to say some shit. Mm -hmm. Because when some shit happens, you look around, why didn't one say nothing? Why didn't you come to my aid? I'm a woman. It can't be both ways. It can't. But I will say this. Defend them anyway. All like, what I was, yeah, I, I was gonna get to something like that. Like, I, I would say this I, I don't necessarily agree with the ladies taking that stance of, well, you defending me. I can get like, I think that needs to be a part of the women kind of trusting men in the general. Like, if a man is trying to defend you, he's not doing the thinking that you can't do it on your own, he's doing it knowing the narrative that's out there that people don't protect women. So he's trying to be your ally in that moment so that y'all can both maybe, you know what I mean? Like, he ain't trying to do it all. He ain't trying to be your savior. He just got your back. Trying to be a sister, you know? Just, and just because... Yeah. Like, like a man holding the door or a man doing something for a woman ain't him trying to negate a woman's power. It's more of him just trying to be like, hey, you ain't got to use your power right now if you don't want to. I got your back. You have an ally in this fight. You, you're you not by yourself. You have another person that's willing to hang your back. Say thank you. You know what I'm saying? So I think it, that, that there's a lot to be said for that being a big factor. I definitely agree. Okay. You don't hold that first door in a two-door sequence. I hold that door for you. You don't say thank you. I go to that second door before you. I'm closing that bitch behind me on purpose. <laughs> Now I'm not that petty, but what I will say is I am good about like if somebody if a, if a, if I'm doing something that like my mama taught me to do, <clears> and a woman rejects it, I am good about like saying okay, well fuck it, then you got it, and not on some petty shit, but just more on some all right, I can respect your power. You go ahead do it, and I will I will let you struggle through that shit because you told me you got it, so I won't I won't. Mm -hmm. Sit back and watch your ass flutter and flutter and flounder. Indeed. I got I so, got to the point where I open the door for a lady. I don't even look at her. I just open the door and just look off into the distance or whatever and just go about my business. Really. Yeah. And I think I think that shocks them even more. Like, oh, you ain't do this at all because you thought I was attractive. Now, if you are attractive, I did look at your BBL before you walked through. You just didn't peep. I have great peripheral vision. But <clears throat> But you gonna still feel like I I didn't pay no damn mind or no attention to you, cause that's just the way it is in this day and age. I'm just leave it like that. <laughs> I like being Mister Mysterious. It works. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a type of motherfucker. I wish you could hold the door for a motherfucker and they not say thank you, and you could run pull that motherfucker back through the door and then close it on the ass. <laughs> But she can't do that. That's illegal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure that one uh, end up being an assault charge in some sense. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Motherfucker should have said thank you. Yeah. Motherfucker, you can't go to jail. You can't go to jail for that. You can't go to jail for motherfucker should have said thank you. <laughs> that's illegal. This shit. So yeah, that's what I said. I wish you motherfucker just need to be more, more. I don't even know the word right now. But say thank you, goddamn shit. And thank you. And this is not the. For us to like discredit it, the times that the fuck boys have reigned supreme and just approached you fifty thousand times in a row, different fuck boy. Each day you actually go out. We understand that, and that's why. And I've seen that, and I peep that. I, the things when you have a platonic friend that uh, looks at you can understand all the shit that you go through. It's been a lot of times where I heard a lot of fucked up shit that women do go through and I'd be shocked that there's a lot of fucked up people like that still out there so do we not, oh, I'm not sure. when we say the things that we say we're not saying it against all of that shit at all at all we, we, that's that's the where we want to say hey we protect women and we're against that bullshit 
whatever. We're only talking about the time where we try to do the right thing and it's not accepted as such. Yeah, so, like you have good people out here in the world and on on male, female, um, whatever gen whatever race, whatever like you just have good people in the world still. Like they're all fucked up people. Don't get me wrong. I ain't saying it ain't. Uh -uh. But when a good person is trying to do a good thing, you don't reject that shit. Like if a woman wants to do something to be nice or a male wants to do something to be nice or a transgender one, like whoever, if somebody want to do something to be nice, why why you can't just accept the nice shit? Like yeah. if it ain't coming with no pretense, it ain't coming with no hey, let me do this with you. Like it's just well, this was the right thing to do. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Why are you mad? What are you mad about? How are you mad at humans for being good humans? I, I, I do not get that part of the motherfucker had grown can had been conditioned and grown so used to motherfuckers being everybody being yeah. shitty towards each other. So when those rare occasions that good human beings who still exist do show up, it's like a motherfucking uh, it's motherfucker's like, what the fuck is that? They always you mean? think you got an ulterior motive. Exactly. Um, nigga, I don't want from you. God damn it. I'm a southern gentleman, god damn it. That's all that is. That shit is right. like the story of my life. People have ulterior motive just because I do nice shit. Like, no, nigga, I believe in karma. And if some shit happened to me, I would want somebody to be nice to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like it doesn't it doesn't take too much to just do some nice shit. Well, it, how about, it, it, I was just raised right, nigga. Shit. Yeah, how about exactly. that? I was my mother raised me with morals and ethics. That's what that is. I was raised with good morals and ethics, nigga. Oh, like, I was raised it, to be a good human being. The wicked shit I do is by choice. Uh huh. But you, you know, people go through their traumas and they they you know what I'm saying? Like I my I got my phrase that don't expect a hum another human a human like you human or, or whatever because it's a lot of times people have nice or whatever and people take their niceness um for advantage or whatever and they get traumatized to a lesser or to a even extreme going away from you know what i'm saying necessarily approach politics i i would just say what do you think is going on with the male and female dynamic right now? Like, why do you think it's so tense between men, men and women? Why do you think like everything gets blown up into a male female issue or protect this group issue? Or like, what, what do you think it is that's leading to people being so? Um, it has a lot to do with media um, because you have to find division somewhere. The, the race shit is getting played out as the new generations come up. The new generations don't care about race, so they can't continue to play that to put that same shit. And the new generations are voting now, so them trying to continue to push the race shit in the media ain't working. But that sexist shit, the divisions of man and female, the feminist agenda, and all that stuff, you can still play on that misogynistic that'll never go nowhere because they always know man versus woman. You they can always play that shit, and that's gonna be forever played in every platform. Um, every avenue whatever you feel me so i feel the the media mass media um social media all types of media have a lot to do with this this new this new big explosion of division between male and female um i believe on some, some conspiracy type shit at the end of the day it's it's a plan to destroy the the traditional household Wow, that's real. That's, 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 a, that's a big, that's a big state. For constant bickering between the two sexes, there is no, there is no. Well, what's the word I'm looking for? There is no compromise. There's also going to be constant bickering. This side over this side, this side over this side. You have to find the, the medium, and no one's speaking on the medium. Everyone, is, everyone wants to speak on this side versus that side. We should be focused on the medium. In every situation where you have two sides, everyone always wants to focus on this side or that side, this agenda versus that agenda. 
not the commonalities in the situation. If ever someone focused on the commonalities, there would not be a large or any explosion of anything because the commonalities bring things together. It's the differences that keep us apart. It's our strong beliefs that us that we stand on our differences that keep wars going on, that keep arguments going on, that keep fights going on for days, weeks, years. Shit, motherfuckers, the Crusades been going on for how long? <laughs> well, that's real. You feel mm -hmm. me? That's the people standing on their beliefs, but no one wants to see the commonality. The difference is who's the messenger. The commonality is the message. Focus on the message. Maybe the war stop. That's real. Message. We want to focus on men and women equal. Men and women equal. Yes, we were all created equal, but we are equal in different avenues. We can't do what you can do in every way, and you can't do what we can do in every way. It's our commonalities where we come together and balance each other out. We don't strive to be you. We don't strive to be us. And I think that's we the don't, we, thing. We, we, don't, we don't strive to, to be any you know? avenue. We don't, I don't know any man who wants to strive to be in any woman avenue. You know what the funny you part is, old man? Mm -hmm. Before you, but I, it ain't even that. It, I don't. I don't know. No, I don't know any man that's trying to be in somebody else's avenue. Period. It's just like you're just trying to be the best you you can be. Exactly. Like yeah, I can't there, do there what are everybody some, else can do. There, there are some. I can't. I can't draw like Pat. I'll never be able to be an artist like him. There are some Mr. Me Too. I can do what I can do. There are some Mr. Me Too ass niggas out there, but to the same extent, there be some Mrs. Me Too creatures like out there too. We just want people to realize the reality of the situations. You can want what you want and feel how you feel, but reality is reality. I can't go out. I don't have a womb, and I can't produce a child on my own. I need a female to continue my legacy. A female wants to continue some part of her legacy, you may not want a man there. You may choose to go to a sperm bank, but guess what? Sperm comes from man. So guess what? We need each other for the continuous of, for our existence to continue. Man and women need each other. We can keep bickering if we want to and watch the birth rate go down. Watch motherfuckers start dying off and these these End of the end of the world star movies, y'all motherfuckers see where motherfuckers ain't been born in decades and shit. Watch that shit start coming true because y'all want to keep bickering. Yeah. Man versus woman, man versus woman. I don't give a fuck. You got your things you you care about. I got my things I care about. We got our things we care about each other. Cool. I don't have to care about everything you care about. You don't have to care about everything I care about. As long as I respect you, Ever respect I, me. You don't have respect. to care about everything I care about. You feel me? You cover like, everything I cover. You cover everything I cover. <laughs> I don't know if they, they women on, on the, in this battle of or searching for a certain level of respect that they feel they're not getting, or a certain image of equality which they feel they're not being seen as. But at the end of the day, it's what you see yourself as. A motherfucker could talk shit to me all day, but if I know I'm great, I'm great. The fuck? Hey, stress of the day. Hey, hey. I mean, hey, hey. be great in your own realms. You don't have to be great in a man's realm. You don't have to try to go in the man's realm and, and I'm, I can defeat you in what you do. I don't want to beat you in what you do. So why you won't beat me in what I do? Right. Let let. Don't try to overdo men, and men won't try to overdo women. I understand there's some fucked up men out there that do a lot of fucked up stuff to females. Those, that's the shit you should be focused on, the, the, the fucked up treatment. Cool. Let's end that shit, because I'm, I'm, I'm all down for ending the fucked up treatment of everybody. I don't like nobody to be treated fucked up. So we can, we, we can definitely all band together on that. But where it's this strong stance for, I want equal this and equal this. Okay. If you want equal pay, let's put it like this. When I used to work at Walmart, there was equal pay, but they used to make the female on the janitorial team only clean the bathrooms. They wouldn't make her 
buff the floors, scrub the floors, pick up pallets like they had the dudes do. To me, that was sexist. So when I took over, I had her ass picking up pallets, buffing the floors, and doing everything else the men would do. And everybody would look at me like, why are you doing that? I'm like, why? She equal. Right? She get paid the same thing they get. So don't look at me and say I'm wrong when I treat women exactly equal to a man. It can't be both ways. <laughs> it can't be I want equal pay, but I don't want to do the same job you do. Oh, that's we get paid the same at the same facility. We need to do the same exact job. You ain't going to do no, no candy ass job getting paid what I get paid and I got to go out here and rest in my back shit. We doing the same work. We yeah. equal. We going to be equal. We going to be equal down to it. What I can do, you can do. Or we could just not be equal. Like, I don't even see why we got to be equal. Like, I really don't get it. Now, as far as pay, I think it should be competitive pay for jobs that are better suited or that women prefer over the ones that men. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, if it's more women nurses than male nurses, cool. But just let jobs in general have competitive pay, and then you ain't got to worry about the gender shit. Like, if you do this, you'll just get paid this. Exactly. And you're going to be expected to do whatever that job entails. But So, like, but if you're a doctor, cool, you yeah. just do everything. If you're a construction worker, you do whatever the construction workers do. If you're a person that go in them sewers and be cleaning out them sewers, and that's what you do. Like, whatever it is you do, you do all of it. And you have to be able to do it to get paid whatever that job pays, but all jobs, you know what I'm saying, get competitive pay. So, like, if you, if everybody that's, if a woman happens to be able to pass whatever test it takes to be, like, a thing, a, uh, one of those special plumbers that go in the sewers and be doing that really nasty job, you feel me? All right, cool. She passed, she go. She get paid whatever them people get paid for that job, and it's just a flat rate as opposed to a gender-based rate. But everybody got to do the same shit. I think you either got to go all equality or just make shit equitable. Realize that people ain't the same. Because when I'm, when I'm at my job, right, and we pulling pallets and we picking up boxes, there's an obvious difference between certain groups of people and others. And I don't mean necessarily even men and women. I just mean like there are some people who ain't who can't do it, and there's some people who can. I don't know that that's necessarily discrimination or anything bad. I think that just, that just goes to point out that like everybody ain't the same. Like all right, that's you, nature, goddamn it, that's nature. Like like this mother, like I can live a lot of shit. That's my thing. Like I'm strong as fuck. I I can do it for a long time. That's just what I've built myself to be. If somebody can sit there on that computer all day though and do that, like that would be boring as fuck to me. I'll go to sleep. But it's somebody that just loves to crunch numbers and stare at computer screens and do that all day. Let him do that. Like don't put him on the line with me. That don't even make sense. <laughs> We ain't equal. I can't do what he do. He can't do what I do. Put him where he belong. Put me where I belong. Everybody get paid the, the same amount of money and we go home. You feel me? Like, I think it should be based off of shit like meritocracy and like uh, seniority and shit like that as far as how you get paid, not gender or anything like that. Like, if you get hired to do the job and you're able to do the job well, then you just get paid that salary for that job. Based, period. You know? Now, <clears throat> just thinking, this might be a high thought, but I feel like when they was like all men created equal, it's like a creative character. Because like all your stats equal you up to the same exact rating. But you might not put them together the same. Like you might be a high exactly. fire, I might be a grappler, this other nigga might be a brawler. Mm -hmm. This other motherfucker might be a goddamn uh, mm -hmm. submission wrestler, but everybody... All 99 is just mm -hmm. no 99 don't look like mine. Yeah. Exactly. You feel me? That's how everybody created equal, but people got to envision it in that way to really understand what equal really means. You feel me? Like equal don't mean the exact same shit, the exact same level. Equal means, oh, at the end of the day, we achieve no, the same you're damn shit. Because right. look, 
three plus like like all right, so three plus two equal five, but four plus one equal five. That ain't mm-hmm. the same shit, but it mm-hmm. is equal. It is equal. Exactly. Your four plus one might be way different than my three plus two, but if we both doing able to accomplish the same mission, I think that's the thing. People get so stuck on their way that another way is threatening to them. Like, well, if their way work too, oh God. Because now exactly. three plus three plus two ain't important no more. Cause now it's a four plus one. Yeah. But maybe it's, it's just different. all just equal. And it's just another way That's to get there. Right. And now more people can also get there. And everybody can one don't have to be better than the other. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, oh like, man. Shit. The the trip shit is I just had this conversation with my son tonight, bro. Like one person's greatness doesn't take away from another person's greatness. It just means that both of them are great. And one may be greater at one thing than another and the other may be greater at another thing than another, but they're both still great. Like it's like when you when you like say you in a say we all in a spelling bee. Mm-hmm. To get to a spelling bee, usually there's a preliminary and some other rounds before you actually get to the main spelling bee. So if you in the spelling bee, you already great. Like you beat all these other people, you've shown that your prowess is there to be there. But it may be this motherfucker from India that just kicks everybody's ass because this motherfucker outstudied. He just outworked it. Like damn it, some people are just better at some shit. Yeah. Like it was, it was hundreds of people in the league when Michael Jordan was playing. But you won't about to be the best player in the league when Michael Jordan was playing. Nah. That's okay. That's not a bad thing about you. Like, you still beat out millions of people to even be in the league. You're but, still great. Your but greatness look at this. Even, even that if greatness, he was the was greatest, greatest player, player, he won't the greatest rebounder at that time. You feel me? And that's another thing, too. Like, so look at it like that. Like everybody got you had to have somebody that was a problem. Everybody couldn't score, but everybody couldn't rebound either. Exactly. Shit, I can barely dribble. Pause. Okay, goddamn. That that went a lot of ways just wrong. So I don't I I'm gonna just <laughs> that's a universal whistle. I don't I don't even know which angle to hit that from. I don't know whether to hit that from the pause angle or no, the like. Nigga, like, what <laughs> angle? Or the like. Go on, Pat. <laughs> you don't stand your ass in the corner, shoot this three point, and shut up. Come on, That's all you, you do. Yeah. Oh. See, Pat, you don't dribble at this age. That shit is gone. You leave that shit to mm-hmm. them young boys. At this age, it is three True. and D. Everything. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> three pointers in defense. Um on, on. God damn, man. You can't even talk sports. <laughs> <while you're in. laughs> oh, DeMarco. But um, I think God damn it, I don't even know where I was going. Damn it, I lose. <laughs> Shit. I was going somewhere with it, but it just lost me. The pause, the pause took it. Okay, oh no, that's what it was. All right, so like, yeah, at this age, it ain't no dribbling no more, Pat. We old. It's three in defense. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm. You either guarding somebody or you in the corner, post it up, waiting for them young niggas to drive. And if they get double teamed or triple teamed, they'll kick it out of you and you hit the three. That's all you do at this age. Or you spectate. You don't dribble nowhere. More than likely. Not, or you spectate. And you sit over on the sideline and you talk to people and you know you collect bets and all that kind of cool shit. But, uh-huh. Yeah, my black ass, you know, I'm I'm three and D. I'm 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 running up and down the court just for cardio, and I'm running from one corner. I'm gonna play defense on my man, and I'm gonna get back to that corner again. And I'm gonna go down the other end and play defense on my man and get back to that corner again. That's all I'm doing. Uh, you ain't about to catch me trying to drive on no niggas and do no fancy moves. And like I, the and one days is over, champ. I'm not God mm-hmm. sham got nobody. I'm a god sham god somebody and fuck around and can't get back up. <laughs> That's gonna be game. Game, game over. Up. 
Yep, we ain't gonna even make it to game point. That's just gonna be game over. What god damn it? Did somebody come get this old nigga off the court. God damn it, he done died. I don't know what happened. I saw that nigga try to do some Avis and shit, and that shit did not work out well. His ankle went one way, the knee went the other way, and this shit just buckled. Like oh, I, I know what I, I know where my life is. You feel huh. me? Like, but I'll tell you this though, Pat. And anybody watching, if you want to set up that three point contest, you can set that shit up because that three is wet. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fuck your jawbone up with the three point. Like you're gonna be fucked up with that. That that's and that and I don't care about your hand in my face and you being six foot eight. Like yeah, yeah, all right. Skadoosh. in your motherfucking mouth. I'll pause it, but I meant it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> shit. That shit is motherfucking wet, boy. I'll be stroking that <laughs> <hole. laughs> Nah, the barco. The barco. Yeah. I was muted when I did it the first time. <laughs> you stupid as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what time is it now uh, man good and fun Dude, yeah. so, it just seems like I, when I start off the list or whatever, I'm like, dang, ain't nothing really happened. And then one after another after another, I find more and more shit or whatever. I'm um I'm also going back and recanting last week. Um, good and fuckery. Uh, I'm gonna take something back. Uh, it turns out that Carol Baskins just made that shit up. We don't know if that nigga alive or not. Still, her ex husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, did he, turns out that, didn't he uh, get eaten by like a tiger or something? Yeah, that's what they say. You know, so I want this. Am I tripping? You're not tripping. Did she fed that nigga to the tiger allegedly? Uh, okay. It was a story that okay. he was living somewhere, maybe in Costa Rica. So he's or some dead shit. And he's living in Costa Rica. Okay. What the mm -hmm. fuck? I, I'm I don't just, get I'm it. just saying. Uh, am they I got stupid? Netflix in Costa Rica, don't they? Don't they got Netflix in Costa Rica? Yeah, what took so long? I'm like, what? Don't don't just nigga this nigga scene. Um, nigga, you know, tiger, yeah. tiger king, or tiger yeah. blood, or tiger monsters was like the biggest shit of the year. Tiger for like two money. years straight. Like didn't they have like the first one was big and then the second one came back out and it was even bigger. Like I feel like why, pause. God, pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh God damn it. Um, so what I mean is, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Go ahead, Pat. Face. Y'all take it. God damn it, man. So the bitch lied. And, um, <laughs> the bitch lied. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. All right. So next week, um, Update on the Tennessee uh, woman cop that uh, was at the center of a police department sex scandal where she uh, basically that she was the office hoe for the, the that Tennessee police department. Turns out yeah, that uh, she was this. offered 10. Hmm? Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm just giving another update on what's going on. Okay. So I'm like, I this, remember this, this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. The, so, but this fool who was offered 10k to uh work strip club, just strip, strip club, 10k. 
So that's have y'all that. seen a picture of this lady? <laughs> she looks very yeah. plain. Yes, she has a fat head. Pulse. Yo, when I say plain Jane, it's very homely. Big scoop bowl head and, ass. If you don't get the fuck out of here, man, man, the classic listen, moment tears one. Listen, this is a it perfect makes, time to just it, say this, ma'am, 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 ma'am. If you don't sit your, if you don't sit your Wonder Bread ass down somewhere, ain't nobody checking for you. And the fact that them it's, niggas was that damn desperate shows how late night and delirious y'all have been. Like underfunded y'all must be to be in there that many damn hours where niggas was like hyped up about your shit. You is extra regular. Well, you probably should say that to the strip club that offered it. It was super normal. <laughs> but it also they makes you a business opportunity. On under that body armor. Because it has to be something. For six of them? No, or it just no, no. Fact it was easy. It don't have to be nothing. Access. True, that's true. Easy. Easy like Sunday morning. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, Afternoon delight, dude. <laughs> I mixed it in. I mixed it in. <laughs> we went from this Sunday morning thing. to afternoon delight. Just my thing. Everybody thinking about it like they had actual physical sexual relations. It could have just been all oral. And she was topping off everybody everywhere in the office. Man, I'm good. But no, 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 no. But I'm saying, everybody just automatically assuming, oh, she got to be this. Dumb. She could have just been the office one that's topping off everybody. <laughs> man, she could have been the office. Man, look, that is, man. And, and still an extra regular, extra plane. Okay, as long as we, long as we agree on that, I don't really oh, care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Regular as fuck. Oh, yes. Uh, Niggas ain't yeah. about to sit there and be paying her and oh, hyping no. her up like she does. Oh, yeah, she is nice. queen. No, I can see. You is, I can see why the strip club did it. I can see why the strip club did it. They were just trying to capitalize on the notoriety of the name right then, and thought they could bring in some extra revenue from that. Now that's real. That's all. They just saw that. But I reminds this. me in this day and age of viral oh, and, and social social media and everything online and everything. They were trying to get black because she would she would have took the ten thousand. Her this stage day, gonna be dry as fuck. There. They better give her ten thousand because her stage gonna be dry as fuck. Them other motherfucking stages might get 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 wet up, but her shit about to be dry as hell. That reminds me. You don't when, sit uh, your big head ass down somewhere. In my previous big occupation, ass. before the before COVID and quarantine. Hold on, Pat. Do y'all remember Alien Nation? Yes, we yeah. do remember. It had the big ass heads and it had like the, okay. the symbols on the side of their head and shit. And and one of them it was, was like the little copy. markings and shit. Okay, mm-hmm. it was like it was yep. like that movie. Yep. Um, That's her with a wig. <laughs> Oh, Put a window on one of them damn things. <laughs> that shows that like is right, right, right. that big right. ass head, that big long that, uh, ass. <laughs> why your head shaped like that? You Alien big, head big. Your head built like a hook. You <laughs> parasaurus loafers. Big dinosaur head, ass. iguanodon, giant. All right, go ahead, head. Pat. Go ahead, talk. Octopus. Oh shit! This thing so it was big, like giant squids and octopus, like the head shape, but not. <laughs> okay, but this reminds me of in my previous occupation before quarantine, and we were all in the um, in the building, in the call center building. There was this one um, lady of the Anglo-Saxon persuasion there, and she would dress of like, the Anglo-Saxon persuasion. Yes. Um, now she Love wasn't the your typical. She wasn't your typical Anglo-Saxon. She looked like she's been around a couple of black strip clubs and worked there a couple of times, but she dressed very okay, simple, very much so. Um, I found out later she had only fans, and I saw her at the mall one day with one of her clients. Short story. 
<laughs> so story. So yes, yeah, so sometimes there's a there's an office hoe. There's a work wife. There's an office hoe. There's, a... there's right. hall monitor. You know, it's translator. So oh 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 oh. oh. I had said like like an interpreter, not like a trans, but like a translator. Like, you know, oh, I, I'm sorry, I heard, I misheard you. No, no, not that type of trans. Translator, translator, interpreter, which leads me into my next topic. Um, yeah. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> oh, way down, you know, this time in Florida, Tampa, Florida. You know how Florida is. It's not a man this time. It's not a Florida man. It's a Florida woman. Uh, she was arrested for impersonating a sign language interpreter. Oh, no, like the <laughs> nigga that did that shit a few years back with the UN got caught. Yes, they like... Um, like, uh, why do like people think they can get away with that? Do they think that deaf people can't see? Like, they can't hear. <laughs> they can see you fine. Like, they see you, motherfucker. <laughs> Like what is that? Like why do they keep? Why, why, where are these people coming from, and why do they keep? Give, she, yo, she is, she, is there she, not a test to see if these people even know sign language to begin with? Like, do they not even know the alpha? Like, how are they getting hired? Who is this company? Said, she was a sign language interpreter. They told her to just hey, yeah, just roll up uh, to the uh, to the place tomorrow, and then she just started up there, and it's footage. Um, on the docket, hey, I have the YouTube well, video look, of her. I don't doing know how it. much that shit pay, but I'm a sign language <laughs> interpreter too. I interpret the fuck out some shit. Get yeah, to me. I do it. I'm too black to do a uh, sign language interpreter, and they might think it's gang signs or some shit. So I'm gonna just leave that alone. <laughs> no comment. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, um, <laughs> well, we go from the interpreter impersonator to another impersonator. Uh, this 29-year-old woman is charged after posing as a student and attending a high school in New Jersey. 29 years old. I don't, let's see. She a young cool guy, ain't she? Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> She ain't even hit cougar hood when she went and trolling for the young one. You use a lion that's gotta get him the breast. Still with the milk on the breath. Let me get him. You're wet behind the ears. Your breath smelling like similar. <laughs> young tenderoni. I am gonna say this name wrong because it's an Asian name and oh, it's Lord. spelled a H Y E J E O N G Shin S H I N. So Young Jiong Shin. Shin. Is the H silent? Young Jin Shin. Young Shin. So so for this this one, we're gonna call this Young Shin. Miss Young Shin. That's her rap name. <laughs> Twenty-nine faces eight. A third degree charge for providing false government document with an intent to verify age or, ident or identity. The New Brunswick Police Department said in news <laughs> news release issued after her arrest on Tuesday. Shit is accused of presenting a fake birth certificate to the New Brunswick Board of Police in an attempt to attend a public high school classes as a juvenile student, according to the police department. She was trying well, to rehearse some young thing. She was trying to be a young pedophile and get an education. I, I, I don't understand. No. Nasty. I don't understand. That's what her nasty ass is doing. <laughs> young Shin. That's a young son. <laughs> Yo! I'm going to say this. Lock her oh, ass up. Treat her, treat her as if she was a dude doing the same yes. shit and lock her yes. ass up. Yes! Lock yeah. her ass the fuck up. What you don't give her no probation. Don't part. don't let her ass out within a year. Lock her ass up. She should not be yeah. allowed around her kids. She's providing yes. false government documents to be around juveniles on purpose. 
Lock her ass up. She's a danger. I'm afraid for my kids to be around her. Oh, my God. Lock her up. Yeah. To South Carolina with you. They got silences. Damn right. (laughs) Anyway, I'm going to just go to the next shit. Uh, oh, Marcus Stokes. Now, when you listen to that name, you think it's a black person, but it's not. He's white. anglo saxon persuasion. He's a quarterback who lost his Florida scholarship after racial slur video leaked and then gets an offer from a HBCU. Hmm? Yes. What HBCU did this dumb shit? Please put them on blast. Uh, I think it was Albany State University. Yeah, that makes sense. Albany State University. So, no, when I first heard this, right, my mind went south. I said, he's going to go to that school and he's immediately going to get jumped. Hmm. <laughs> nope. They probably going to fuck with it. People nah, are warped nah, these nah, days, nah. man. The update, I think the coach has like took it back and apologized for it because I think he found out about the damn video or whatever and they showed it or some shit or he just, I don't know. But they redacted their offer basically and said they and apologized for even doing it. But it was, it was fuckery. So I put it on the list. But that's my thing. If nobody would have ever said nothing about their decision to do that, they would have never rescinded their invitation to that young man. They'd have kept forward with their shit. If nobody would have made no big deal about it and everybody swept that shit on the rug like 90% of the bullshit that goes on, they'd have went forth with their plans initially and then had the racist pipe on the black team. That's all. And then try to, they'd have tried to fill some type of quota by giving him a scholarship. Nah, it's all the game, man. It's all business, man. It's all business. You ain't never lying there, though. I think the business of shit kind of adds an extra layer on yeah. everything. Yeah. Anyway, it, uh, business does not require balls. That's the fucked up part. And it uh-huh. should. It should. Because I feel like it's a place for both. But it's all numbers. I, it's all numbers. Yeah, but I feel like within them numbers, you can like to me, numbers are kind of like words. I can flip them to make it look like whatever. Same with images. I can show you the same image and give you three different narratives, and based off of them narratives, you will see three different things on that image. Right, same thing with words, same thing with numbers. I can give you whatever. That's why scientific studies be so fucked up and crazy because it'd be like a study that come out this month that says this, and then the very next month another study come out that contradicts the fuck out of it. You feel me? So like I I think when it comes to any situation, really, like we gotta be careful when we. When we talk about that. Like, I, I think you got to really look at the fact that we bunch of contradictions, man. Uh huh. Tis what it is to be human. And I'm Tis. And yes. I'm a human. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to end the fuckery off. On a good note that some fuckery got um, justice prevailed in some fuckery. Um, Clarence Moses L. is paid nearly $2 million for the wrong, a wrongful conviction and imprisonment here. Um, the, wait, I'm trying to see how long. He spent 28 years in prison for a rape and beating he insisted he did not commit. This, from what I was reading, the woman had a dream that he did that to her. 
I'm mad I actually said the R word. I'm sorry. But, uh, but they locked him up, and he didn't do it for 28 years. But because of that, he's he's been paid nearly $2 million. That ain't enough. Definitely ain't enough. That's 28 years of my life. That's a whole Two human being life. Two million <laughs> enough, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Two million and enough. 28 years of innocent life plus the trauma and torment of being in there and whatever he had to deal with to survive or do to survive that long. I, I, I feel like, like there should be a punishment for the person that accused them of these things because you never hear the, that. The, the, the lifelong, for the rest of his life, whatever he had to deal with mentally from the 28 years he spent behind bars, like whoever the the prosecution needs to have charges placed on the one who with the false education educ- the, the the bitch with the dream mm-hmm. need to get get motherfucking charges. You ain't Martin Luther King, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ain't, ain't Martin Luther, Luther King. And you, you ain't Meek Mill. You even got a dream. Fuck your dream, bitch. Shit. Oh, don't wait a minute. Shit ain't never never right, man. I'm glad he's finally got justice with his long, long, long overdue. But it's too many. It's far too many people behind bars that are probably faced with the same bullshit. They innocent. More bullshit from back in the day got got them thrown in there. Some bullshit evidence, or oh, oh, yeah, he did it. I, 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 I think that was him. I am a glass on, but oh, as long as you think it was him, you, he go, he go in. That's the same uh, shit that happened in Rosewood. Burn that Rosewood. Um, uh, y'all remember that movie? Yes. Oh yes. Whole same as that. That's why I say it should be a lie. A lie will fuck some shit up, won't it? Yeah. Yes, indeed. That, what's that phrase? The if you disrespect me in public, the 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 apology should be public or whatever. Yeah. I think like anytime, all images got to be reciprocal. Yeah, like anytime some shit like this happened, she should be blown up. Her picture should be up there just like his was, and mm-hmm. she should get fined or some type of like response. So whoever does it, male, female, or, or whatever, they could get some type of punishment for putting somebody through that because a lot of times what people don't talk about is when they do get accused of these things and it turns out that they they uh, actually won the case or it, they couldn't prove it or if they didn't do it at all they still spend the rest of their life looking like a rapist or whatever. Kobe yeah, Bryant died, yeah. and then after he de- his death right. they still were bringing up his rape shit. I said you that word again. I'm apologize. Damn it. No, great. You great. ain't you you it's okay. I understand. I'll i I'm, like, I'm gonna be doing a lot of <clears throat> editing this up. This up, this one. I got a lot to do. Uh and pod squad, I'm sorry. The episodes have been so slow to get to y'all uh these past couple weeks. I am yeah, my brother was asking. I'm going through a crisis at my at my crib right now. So uh y'all just gotta bear with me. All right. Appreciate you. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. All understood. And uh, pretty much, yeah, that was the fuckery. Um, that's, that's pretty much it, man. Hey, man, I got, I got a question. How long ago was the biblical flood? Hmm. Uh, Four the days before the nights, right? No, 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 no. How long? How ago? long? Ago? Like about at least two thousand years ago, of course. So, like, um... nah. I think it was mm-hmm. longer than two thousand years ago, man. I think it coincides with, coincides with the younger Dryas. Well, Here you go. Here you go. History, history, face. Go ahead, <laughs> Professor. Break <laughs> that shit down with the Dryas and the uh, go 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 go. Go bibliotech it. 
<laughs> what the fuck is called to go back to the to go back to the back to the go back to the 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 the old Babylonian period. Um, talk that shit. 1880 to 1595 BCE and reached the Syro Palestine and later half of the second millennium BCE. Uh, let's see. Let's see if they can break it down to some terms that we can like, grasp Whoa. that time period. Okay. It was the fifth century before Christ, basically. Okay, I get that. So, what is that like? Uh, five thousand BC, five like between five thousand and four thousand BC. They said like five hundred. You know, you know five hundred to four hundred BC. So, like, um, <laughs> what? Like everything back you know, like, like tenant, like the movie tenant, like, like, like inverted periods. You know, before before Christ is like like time is they they do it backwards like. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, man. I know what you're talking about. It's it's like they go in negative numbers almost, but it ain't no negatives. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, what? <laughs> no, yo, this gonna be the wildest episode to try to edit, yo. This is gonna be horrible. Oh my oh, god! Man. Like the technical difficulties. Pod Squad, please bear with us. I we I apologize. I don't know what whether it's my internet, face internet, pet internet, the, the internet of everybody, oh, whether it's really? God. I don't know, but it is it is just struggling. So we take um turns on a week to week basis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm pretty sure that uh yeah, this this ain't this ain't going well. Um but what this I will say is this man. Uh I'm a I'm gonna piece this shit together real nice. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put the black business in there somehow. I'm gonna record that separately or something and just throw that shit in there somehow as like a little splice in. Mm-hmm. And uh everything will be all right. We're gonna figure Damn. this shit out. Pod squad, y'all just stay with us and God bless us. God bless I'm all the all the tink tink hearts. I don't know what happened tonight. Uh shit was all over the place. Like I was out. Face was out, Pat was out, we was here, we weren't there, nobody was there, everybody was here. It was a lot. I don't know. Um, blame Streamyard. Let's write a write an angry letter to Streamyard. Yeah, blame them. Yeah. Don't blame me. Damn you, Streamyard. Um, but uh, yeah, man. Uh, give us money. Do that shit. Dollar sign partner tears one on cash out. Buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. Spotify the partners. Y'all know what it is. On any of them platforms, you can donate money to us and give us money if you would like to. If you'd like to give us money and get some back, face how they gonna do that. Well, you can go to the store. That's rtrayclothing.com. Artreclothing.com. A R T R E clothing.com. No, I will not spell clothing for you. Artreclothing. Never will. Never. Never spell clothing. And Pat, if they want to reach us on social media, how can they do that? Well, at sign T H E P O D N A S. At sign T H E P O D N A S. That is the Twitter, that is the Instagram, that's the TikTok, that's the Twitch, and on Facebook, Tiz Space Pat are the partners. I was trying to say, right, that when you are going um, before Christ, time is backwards, like you're in the negatives 
or whatever. That's what I was trying to say. And then my internet fucked up. I'm sorry. But yeah, at sign T H E P O T N A S. <laughs> if you want to contact us, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is how he came back. I don't know. It's one of them nights, people. Class Mod, I told you, it's blame StreamYard. Write it, write an angry email to StreamYard.com backslash uh, HR or whoever they got that, that answer angry emails because they be doing wild shit. But uh, yeah, man, uh, as always, I've been one third of the partner. I've been your boy, Ted, and I've been with. It's the Padawan here. I'm sorry, I'm back. But we about to leave, so yeah, I'm along with the other third. Face. Mom. I'm in the place. I didn't start out in the race, so I ain't in the one either. But damn it, we here. Thank you for being here with us, too, because you could have been anywhere else. But you came here with us and joined our conversation. Keep on coming back, man. Appreciate y'all, man. We about this bitch. And um, as always, peace, motherfuckers. We about this thing. We love y'all. We're going to see y'all next week. This was episode 113. 113, yeah. Just know it. Year three, we coming in your face. Conversations is getting realer. We getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to that to that 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 thing. Like, comment, share, describe. Like Lauren Watch Hill said, shit. that thing, that I don't know what that thing is, but that thing. You feel me? So, uh, God damn it! <laughs> damn it, man! What? Good night, everybody. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. God damn it. I ain't about to keep fucking with this shit. Uh, peace out, motherfuckers. Bye. Um, peace out. <laughs>